Are you ready to learn more about your camera's histogram display? Hi, I'm Julie from Ultimate Photo Tips, and last week I brought you part one in a little mini-series I'm doing about histograms. And there, I covered the basics of understanding and interpreting your histogram. This week in part two, I want to talk about how to use that information to help you correct any problems with your exposure. So let's get started right away with some examples. In this first landscape, you can see that the histogram goes all the way to the right edge, and there's a spike right at pure white. We refer to this as the histogram being clipped. It means that you've lost details in the whites. We sometimes say the whites are blown out. And this is not recoverable later in software. You need to correct it in the field and reshoot the image. So what do you do if you see this kind of histogram? It means that your image is too bright and that you have too much light. And that means that you need to reduce your exposure, either by using a smaller aperture or a faster shutter speed. Now here, I've reduced my exposure by one stop and the histogram is no longer clipped. If your histogram is clipped on the left, it means you've lost detail in the shadows. We sometimes say that the shadows are blocked up. So to correct that, you would need to add light to your exposure with a wider aperture or a longer shutter speed. Now, what about this instance? I have both dark shadow and bright highlights in the same image. So my histogram here is clipped on both ends. This means that the dynamic range of the scene is just too great to be captured by your sensor. And if I try to correct the darks by adding light, I'm just going to make the whites worse and vice versa. The only way to deal with this is to create an HDR image, a high dynamic range image. And that means taking several exposures, some that correctly capture the shadows and some that correctly capture the highlights and then merging them together in software. That's really the only way to do it is in post-processing. This is the result. And here is the histogram. So you have to always remember that our eyes can see much more than our cameras can. Now, the examples that I've been showing you so far are what's known as luminosity histograms. And they show the average brightness levels in your image across all three color channels. Your camera can also split this out into an RGB histogram, which shows the brightness level of each of the red, green, and blue channels separately. Now, when would you want to use that? Here's an example where I have a completely red image. And if you see just the luminosity histogram, it looks like the image may be underexposed. And certainly it seems like I could increase the exposure without blowing out any highlights. However, when I show you the RGB histogram for the image, you can see that the reds are right at the right edge. And if I increase the exposure, I would blow out the red channel. And that means that I would lose detail in the reds. So that's why when you're photographing something in a single color, the luminosity histogram can be deceptive since it's showing the average of the brightness levels across all channels. So displaying the RGB histogram separately can give you a more accurate picture of what's going on. Okay, that's enough for today. Next week, I'm gonna have the final part in this histogram video series, and it's gonna be for the people who are shooting in raw mode. It's a technique called exposing to the right and it's going to help you maximize the amount of data and detail that you're capturing in your images. In the meantime, if you want more information on histograms and more examples, be sure to check out the links on ultimatephototips.com that are right below this video. Happy shooting, and I'll see you next time.